we've got a couple people logged on here. Um, <clears throat> what I wanted to do this afternoon, uh, it's out here, it's kind of rainy and, uh, you know, just kind of a, a lazy afternoon. And uh, with having uh, three kids and working two jobs, I don't get a, a chance so much to just sit and read sometimes. But uh, earlier today, I pulled out uh, one of my collections from the uh, Penguin Classics. I picked this up at a used bookstore. Uh, this is a collection of early Christian writings, and what I want to read to you today is uh, from the the Didache. And uh, for for those of you that are that are just joining, welcome to I Never Forget the Blood. Um, we're an educational and charitable organization, uh, you know, seeking to advance the kingdom of God and to uh, relieve suffering around the world. And so, uh, you know, welcome to this. And so I'm going mobile here. Uh, just, you know, just wanting to share a few things. Um, the reason I want to share with you uh, from the Didache, uh, and that just uh, means the teaching. Uh, now, I'm not a, a professor or, or anything like that. I'm just a, a brother that uh, just enjoys church history. And, you know, one of the things that I've learned is that... <laughs> You know, the church looks different. Uh, the Church of Jesus Christ, the corporate body of Christ, uh, you know, that, that precious bride, it looks different throughout the world and throughout time. Um, but, you know, a lot of times we get kind of just accustomed to what we're used to. <laughs> uh, and that's kind of redundant there. But I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, we get, uh, we, we think small, um, you know, we think a lot of times that, you know, the, the way that we're used to doing church, uh, you know, the things that, that we've learned um, just within our, our small community or, or in our uh, regional community, that that's the only way uh, that, that church ought to be done. Uh, or, you know, that's the only way that a, that a Christian can be. Uh, so educating yourself uh, on, on church history and, and seeing, uh, you know, how the body of Christ operates throughout the world, uh, you know, that can be uh, very beneficial, and it can also uh, open us up to be more merciful uh, with ourselves and with one another. Um, so, you know, we shared a, a post, uh, I think it was yesterday. Um, it was actually a, a cropped an image uh, from a screenshot that somebody else shared from uh, a, a seminary professor's tweet saying uh, to the effect that uh, you know, if your theology leads you to be bitter and critical uh, rather than, you know, merciful and and loving, um, you know, it hasn't really gotten into your heart. Even though it might be right, uh, you could still be wrong. Uh, so uh, what I want to do today is just share something with you that's been a, a blessing to me. Um, and that's uh, reading through the the early church writings. Uh, you know, after the close of the canon. Now, I, I want to clarify uh, what I'm going to be reading. I do not believe is scripture. Uh, it's, you know, the only inspired word of God is the, the 66 books from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, you know, but there are early church writings that, you know, just give us an insight as to what the, uh, you know, what the church mindset was uh, in the, you know, in these early generations uh, after the ascension of Christ, after the, the writing of Revelation, uh, you know, and just, uh, you know, the close of the canon. So, um, you know, actually the, this, the Didache, uh, it's believed to be uh, the, the most ancient uh, early church writing after uh, Revelation. So this is a collection of what the disciples of the apostles taught. Uh, and so I, I want to refrain from personal commentary as much as I can and and just share uh, with you uh, you know just what uh, what this teaching was and how the early church uh, believed about life and about uh, you know operating a, a local church and and so forth so uh, as I said I'm, I'm going to try to refrain as much as I can from uh, personal commentary uh, and, and opinion but uh, you know, I want to, to leave that up to you to, you know, be a, 
a good Berean, you know, like the the Bible says, uh, you know, to to see whether the things are not the, whether the things that are said here, uh, whether or not they are true, whether or not they are, uh, you know, they are they line up with Scripture. So, I'll, you know, that that's in, that ball's in your court. Uh, I just want to share with you uh, I, that I have found a lot of this edifying. I, I don't personally 100% line up with everything that's written in here, um, but you know, we could discuss that in, uh, in comments. And you know, if you want to send a message to never forget the blood, that's uh, you know, that's you're welcome to do that as well. Uh, so, uh, just a little preface here also. The Didache is kind of in, in two parts. Uh, the first part is called the two ways, uh, the way of life and the way of death. And then the second part is about uh, kind of like a, a church, uh, an early church membership course. You know, so, uh, uh, you know, like if you were deciding that you wanted to be uh, a member of a local church, it's kind of like the, the church covenant or, you know, like the earliest confession of, uh, of faith and, and whatnot. Kind of just, so it's just called the teaching. And it was believed to be uh, the uh, the teaching of the disciples in the second generation after uh, the twelve apostles. So it's you know close to uh, you know as, as pure as anything we could get. Now, obviously, um, you know what I'm going to read is an English translation of this, and uh, um, this was uh, translated from. Uh, I'm sorry, by, I think in the 1880s, uh, this this version was translated. So, as I said, I do want to, uh, I'm going to refrain as much as I can from personal commentary. I know that said that probably about three or four times already, um, except if I'm trying to remind uh, the hearers of the, the context of what's being said, because uh, it kind of does refer to itself back and forth, okay? So, uh, if you want to, just... Uh, you know, make yourself a cup of tea and sip along, uh, you know, just as we uh, go through this. So this is the Didache, or the teaching. Uh, the Part one, the two ways. The way of life. There are two ways, a way of life and a way of death. And the difference between these two ways is great. The way of life is this. Thou shalt love first the Lord thy creator, and secondly, thy neighbor as thyself, and thou shalt do nothing to any man that thou wouldst not wish to be done to thyself. What you may learn from these words is to bless them that curse you, to pray for your enemies, and to fast for your persecutors. For where is the merit in loving only those who return your love? Even the heathens do as much as that. But if you love those who hate you, you will have nobody to be your enemy. Beware of the carnal appetites of the body. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other one to him as well, and perfection will be yours. Should anyone compel you to go a mile, to go, uh, go another one with him. If anyone takes away your coat, let him have your shirt too. If someone seizes anything belonging to you, do not ask for it back again. You could not get it anyway. Give to everyone that asks, without looking for any repayment. For it is the Father's pleasure that we should share His gracious bounty with all men. A giver who gives freely, as the commandment directs, is blessed. No fault can be found with him. But woe to the taker! For though he cannot be blamed for taking if he was in need, yet if he was not, an account will be required of him as to why he took it, and for what purpose, and he will be taken into custody and examined about his action, and he will not get out until he has paid the last penny. The old saying is in point here, let your alms grow damp with sweat in your hand until you know who it is you are giving them to. The second commandment in the teaching means this, Commit no murder, adultery, sodomy, fornication, or theft. Practice no magic, sorcery, abortion, or infanticide. See that you do not covet anything your neighbor possesses. And never be guilty of perjury, false witness, slander, or malice. Do not equivocate in thought or speech, for a double tongue is a deadly snare. 
The words you speak should not be false or empty phrases, but fraught with purposeful action. You are not to be avaricious or extortionate, and you must resist any temptation to hypocrisy, spitefulness, or superiority. You are to have no malicious designs on a neighbor. You are to cherish no feelings of hatred for anybody. Some you are to reprove, some to pray for, and some, again, to love more than your own life. Keep away from every bad man, my son, and from all his kind. Never give way to anger, for anger leads to homicide. Likewise, refrain from fanaticism, quarreling, and hot-temperedness. For these, too, can breed homicide. Beware of lust, my son, for lust leads to fornication. Likewise, refrain from unclean talk and the roving eye, for these, too, can breed adultery. Do not always be looking for omens, my son, for this leads to idolatry. Likewise, have nothing to do with witchcraft, astrology, or magic. Do not even consent to be a witness of such practices, for they, too, can all breed idolatry. Tell no lies, my son, for lying leads to theft. Likewise, do not be over-anxious to be rich or to be admired, for these, too, can breed thievishness. Do not be a grumbler, my son, for this leads to blasphemy. Likewise, do not be too opinionated and do not harbor thoughts of wickedness, for these, too, can breed blasphemy. Learn to be meek, for the meek are to inherit the earth. School yourself to forbearance, compassion, guilelessness, calmness, and goodness, and never forget to respect the teaching you have had. Do not parade your own merits or allow yourself to behave presumptuously, and do not make a point of associating with persons of eminence, but choose the companionship of honest and humble folk. Accept whatever experience comes your way in the knowledge that nothing can happen without God. By day and by night, my son, remember him who speaks the word of God to you. Give him the honor you would give the Lord. For wherever the Lord's attributes are sub are uh, excuse me. For wherever the Lord's attributes are the subject of discourse, there the Lord is present. Frequent the company of saints daily, so as to be edified by their conversation. Never encourage dissensions. But try to make peace between those who are at variance. Judge with justice, reprove without fear or favor, and never be in two minds about your decisions. Do not be like those who reach out to take, but draw back when the time comes for giving. If the labor of your hands has been productive, your giving will be a ransom for sins. Give without hesitating and without grumbling, and you will see whose generosity will requite you. Never turn away the needy. Share all your possessions with your brother. And do not claim anything is your own. If you and he are joining our, excuse me, if you and he are joint participators in things immortal, how much more so are you in things that are mortal? Do you, you are not to withhold your hand from your son or daughter. But bring them up in the fear of God from their childhood. Never speak sharply when giving orders to male or female domestics whose trust is in the same God as yours. Otherwise, they may cease to fear him who is over you both. He has not come to call men according to their rank, but for those whom he has prepared in the spirit. And you, servants, obey your masters with respectfulness and fear. As the representatives of God, hate all impiety and everything that does not please the Lord. See that you do not neglect the commandments of the Lord, but keep them just as you receive them, without any additions or subtractions of your own. In church, make your confession. Um, I'm sorry. In church, make confession of your faults, and do not come to your prayers with a bad conscience. This is the way of life. The way of death. The way of death is this. To begin with, it is evil, and in every way fraught with damnation. In it are murders, adulteries, lusts, fornications, thefts, 
idolatries, witchcraft, sorceries, robberies, perjuries, hypocrisies, duplicities, deceit, pride, malice, self-will, avarice, foul language, jealousy, insolence, arrogance, and boastfulness. Here are those who persecute good men. Hold truth in abhorrence. These, here are those who persecute good men, those who hold truth in abhorrence and love falsehood, who do not know the rewards of righteousness, nor adhere to what is good, nor to just judgment, who lie awake planning wickedness rather than well-doing. Gentleness and patience are beyond their conception. They care for nothing good or useful and are bent only on their own advantage without pity for the poor or feeling for the distressed. Knowledge of their creator is not in them. They make away with their infants and deface God's image. They turn away the needy and oppress the afflicted. They aid and abet the rich, but arbitrarily condemn the poor. They are utterly and altogether sunk in iniquity. Flee, my children, from all this. The conclusion of part one, the two ways. Take care that nobody tempts you away from the path of this teaching. For such a man's tuition can have nothing to do with God. If you can shoulder the Lord's yoke in its entirety, then you will be perfect. But if that is too much for you, do as much as you can. As regards diet, keep the rules so far as you are able. Only be, able, only be careful to refuse anything that has been offered to an idol, for that is the worship of dead gods. This was the part one of the Didache. Again, you know, this is, uh, you know, not necessarily uh, something I'm promoting 100%, but I have found blessing in it uh, to be, uh, you know, just an edification of, of understanding what the, the thought, the school of thought and the mindset of the earliest Christians was. Uh, so this, uh, this Didache is what was uh, produced as the, the teaching of the disciples who were uh, the second generation of the church, those who were discipled by the apostles of Christ. So, you know, just within, you know, the, the first, you know, couple hundred years of the church, even before Constantine and, and all that. So, uh, you know, I hope that this, uh, this part was a blessing to you. Thank you.